Hello everybody, John Abdo here, author of Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo. I just want to give you a different type of presentation today. I'm actually trying a different recording style. For those of you who've been watching and following me, I, I've done a couple live presentations. So today I'm directly going right to the screenshots here. And I just want to talk about more specifically about the uh, research that I've done on the book, actually. So as you know, Wolves of Croton is about the story of Milo of Croton, the greatest Olympiad wrestler of all time the strongest man who ever lived, the man who's known to have carried a bull. So from a young boy to a mature man, he carried a young calf to a mature bull. We'll get into how bulls progress in weight and size. But this is Milo's record. It's a very impressive record. You could see that in 540 BC, which is the 6th century BC, he competed in the World Youth Games. He was around 19 years of age because the expiration for youth competitor qualifications is before their 20th annum. So Milo competed in the World Youth Games, and that's when he started dominating the world stage. He was a major hit at the World Youth Games. In fact, as a youth, he walked into the stadium carrying a younger bull on his back, and people would say, yeah, we're wondering what it'll be like next year when the bull weighs 600 or 700 pounds more. Milo kept coming back, and not only was his bull bigger, but he was bigger as well. 61st, 62nd, 63rd, 64th, 65th, 66th, 67th Olympiad Games. He won seven Olympiad titles according to Simonides, who was around the same age as Milo. Milo was born in 559 BC. Simonides was actually born in 556 BC, somewhere there. He's like three years younger than Milo. So you can imagine growing up with this unbelievable human being in existence, a god man that they were calling Milo because no other human was able to lift a bull, let alone perform all of the other feats that Milo performed. When Milo was nearing 48, 49 years of age, he fought in the Battle of Sybaris, which he commanded an army of inferior numbers. The historians say Milo's army was approximately 100,000 soldier athletes. The Sybarites mounted over 300,000 warriors onto the battlefield. Milo came to the battle wearing a lion pelt as his garb, a lion that he killed, symbolic of Hercules, who killed the Nemean lion as one of his 12 labors. And we'll talk about this later. In 509 BC, Milo met his demise. So let's go to the next chart. This is just another chronology, basically the same thing. The other one I started at the World Youth Games. Here I'm starting at Milo's birth, which I mentioned is 559 BC, but it goes in succession here from the 61st to the 67th Olympiad Games, 536 to 512 respectfully, the Battle of Sybaris, which was 510 BC, and his death at approximately the age of 50 at 509 BC. But you could see this here is almost like a 30-year dominance when he started in 540 BC to 510. A 30-year dominance as being the strongest, toughest man in the world. And I say 30 years because he fought in the Battle of Sybaris as an athlete. And this is what uh, the Olympiad Stadium looked like. And I believe that these arch arches right here, I believe it went all the way across, maybe some ransackers just knocked them down and got some pieces of Olympia back at home, you know, as their relics or whatever. But this was the actual arch stone corridor that Milo of Croton walked down. And that's where the uh, stadium was at. That's where the running races. So you can imagine all these people on the grounds over there, tens of thousands of people waiting. And when Milo came in holding a bull, they would see the light at the end of the tunnel darken. They go, Milo is coming. Milo is coming. All right, so here's the progression right here. I'm going to skip back and forth. Uh, let me see from this chart to this chart. In fact, let me show you this chart first. The approximate progression of body weight. So in doing the research of the book, I just didn't research Milo. I researched all the animals, the wolves, the bulls, the eagles, the mongooses, all these animals I did research on to find out exactly what they weighed, how big they were, 
their temperament, the topography they lived on, et cetera, et cetera. So according to, this is more recent records, ancient animals were of different sizes. And some say they were even bigger in size because they had more sustenance uh, availability. But a newborn calf weighs approximately uh, 88 pounds. That's what Milo is lifting down here. His base training, 40 kilos, is 88 pounds. And as the bull gets older, uh, around nine months of age, I didn't put six or nine months of age in here, but I do list it in the book. It's about 650 pounds between six and nine months of age. And the interesting thing is that even though Milo was able to lift a full grown bull, which they become full grown at around four years of age, which is well over a ton, 2,200 pounds. Some may weigh 1,800 pounds. <laughs> it's still a huge weight. I believe many athletes on Milo's team who mimic Milo, if they weren't able to lift yearlings, they definitely do quarter squats with them, lift them up. They definitely were grappling with the bulls. Uh, for strength training, you know, grabbing them by the horns. The horns were probably wrapped in padding and stuff like that so they wouldn't get poked and uh, get injured. But around six to nine months, they're weighing between 650 to 900 pounds. A yearling, obviously 12, uh, 12 months or one year. You could see two years, three years, and four years. So Milo, as a young boy right here, as a young boy right there, he definitely aspired to be this guy right here. He put this image of this bull in his mind at a young boy and says, every day I'm going to progressively burden myself with this resistance and that'll be the conditioning process that I will endure. And I believe the ancient athletes, particularly Milo of Croton, if Milo was lifting a calf to a bull, he was around livestock, so he was around rich people. His father was a rich man, and you just didn't have bulls and calves and horses and pigs and all forms of livestock if you didn't have money. So I believe Milo came from a rich family. He was just into defending the ideology and economic status of Croton. He took care of his people. The more he became popular, the more Croton grew as a city-state, the more popular it became. Pythagoras was there. The greatest physicians of the world were there. Caliphon and Democrates, which you've seen, obviously, in other presentations and stuff like that. But you go from this as a young boy lifting 88 pounds, and then over the course of four years, and all of a sudden, boom, you become Milo of Croton, the man who can carry a bull, the strongest man in history. So now, obviously, we go to other areas of the uh, story, and Milo performed many, many strength feats, as we know, especially those of you who read the book and are following my videos here. And this is from a historian, the story of the Greeks, which is all based on historical facts. Milo's hands were so strong that when he seized a chariot, even with one hand only, four horses could not make it stir could not make the wheels stir until he let it go. Milo's hands were so strong. I think it takes the whole body, but look at his hands. You can see his triceps right there. This is artwork I designed and I had commissioned to, uh, uh, to an artist. Did an excellent job at that. But this is four horses right here. That's four horses. You can see one nose, two nose, three nose, four nose. It's hard to draw four horses that are side by side. The charioteer slaps the loins. The horses start kicking up their feet and dust, but the wheels do not stir. So Milo Croton was an absolute powerful, powerful man. The other strength feats I describe in the book, remarkable strength feats. They talk about his hand strength quite a bit. And I believe the reason why they talk about Milo's hand strength, other than the fact that he was able to carry a bull, was the fact that in 524 BC, they had a ruling against finger breaking when Milo was competing for his fourth Olympiad title. And it's like, why are you changing the rules on this guy? Well, they weren't changing the rules on Milo per se. They were trying to make the rules more fair for his wrestlers because a lot of wrestling techniques, you just wave your hands in front of the opponent, especially Milo. You don't want to lock up with this guy, hand cupping the back of the neck, the other hand cupping the uh, uh, the tricep of your opponent or hands on shoulders. You don't want to even 
and get close to this guy. People were using the technique called acrotriorasmos, and acrotriorasmos is just staying away from your opponent as long as you can, and hopefully the guy will get tired, and then you can go in with some type of offensive maneuver. But not against Milo. Uh, his hands were so strong that when he grabbed your hands, <laughs> his, his opponent's hands, I think he just crushed their fingers, broke their fingers, broke their hands, broke their wrists. And if he d gave a twist, dislocated elbows and pulled humeruses out of shoulder joints and things like that. So that, that was a game changer in 524 BC. Uh, four years later, in 520 BC, and I did a whole live seminar on this uh, just recently, and I think live seminars are only on Instagram for 24 hours, but this is on my YouTube, and you can go and watch that. The Hoplitodromos is hoplite warriors running at the Olympiad Games, a real controversial decision by the uh, Elian Committee. It's like the reason why they founded the games in the first place is to have peaceful acts because the Greeks, all the Greek city-states were fighting for territory. But to have a warrior with a spear, a shield, helmet, greaves, this picture right here kind of looks like he's barefoot, but they would have bushkins, which are boots. And they, um, they ran in races. The race that they uh, raced was called the dialysis. And the uh, dialysis is uh, two lengths of the stadium, uh, garbed in military armor. And I describe it. Look at this guy right here. So here's a hoplite soldier. I describe it. And he doesn't have all the garb on, but uh, he's got this heavy hoplon, which is a shield. <laughs> this guy looks muscular enough to... Uh, to, to hold this, but he's got a he's got a sprint like twelve hundred feet, six hundred one way, six hundred the other. Can you imagine how hot? That's a metal helmet. That's a bronze helmet. Can you imagine how hot it is inside there? He starts sweating, and what? How's he going to wipe the sweat from his eyes? That's dripping in his eyes. The Olympia Games were contested in Olympia in August, where it's super hot. I mean, just look at this guy's body. Look at the scars he's got here and here and here. Uh, uh, oh, here's some scars on his thigh right there. You can see the scars right there. I'm John Abdo, thanking you for watching. Stay strong and healthy, and perhaps one day, thousands of years from now, people then will be remembering your name as well.